Hey everybody, Scal Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week. It's getting a little hectic out there the closer we get to the holidays. We only get a couple weeks, you know, it was the big day, not even, and uh, a little stressful this time of year. I want to have a real fun episode today, got a few things planned, a little bit of a mosh. And let's get right to it. Okay, first off, I want to start out by saying I, I don't get a lot of uh, viral videos on this channel. We kind of have a, a group of people that stick around for a while, but, you know, very rarely do I have a video that goes over 100,000 views. But my two most viewed videos, one of them is Confessions of a Hammerholic, which uh, just recently shot up there. And this one here, this one's been a, a big viewed video of my channel for a long time and what it is is i don't know if you've ever seen this before um this is a demonstrator that you would see when you went to an auto parts store or something and when i was i would always see one of these when i would go into an auto parts store and i said i think that's i love playing with stuff that i see at auto parts stores or something if you have something that demonstrates your product i'm all in i love that so this here was the uh lucas uh, they made oil additives and stuff, and uh, this is their heavy-duty oil stabilizer demonstration. And I just wanted to show, and they make all kinds of products, and here was their pamphlets that they would have in the middle here that you could look over their products. They always had full-color pamphlets. This was a way a company should be run, and that's why they're so popular. But how this uh, worked and what it did was uh, this one here had plain motor oil, and this one here had the motor oil with a percentage of stabilizer that you would add instead of your last quart of oil into your car. And what it would do is it would make the oil sticky and it would, it would and now you got to see the original video on this, but truckers swear by this stuff and people with like 300,000 miles on their engine swear by whatever the case may be. But the one thing is I always, so I bought this demonstrator just to have it because I think it's cool. And you can see how it works when you turn, and I'll show you this here, I'll move you closer. When you turn the uh, the dials, okay, if you watch the oil, the oil will travel up. Can you see that? It travels up the gears all the way up to almost the top and around the top one. You see that with the additive. But if you have just the plain motor oil, it only makes it up to like the second gear. But, and I had a lot of people say, well, there's not as much motor oil on there. That has nothing to do with it, the travel. It just so happens that I got one <laughs> where, you know, and every demonstrator I saw, they were equal, but it just so happens the one I have, you know, they didn't fill this up. So I was going to drill a hole and put some extra motor oil in, but it, I don't want to mess with it, you know, but just so you know, it has nothing to do with the fact that there is not as much motor oil on here. What it does, it's, it's the stickiness. You see how that's traveling all the way up to the top gear because it's like kind of gooey? Well, that's what this stuff does. So I just thought I would just reintroduce it in case you didn't see that. And uh, I, I thought these were so cool. I love stuff when you go into an auto parts store and you get to play with hand, even a hardware store, you know, hands on. This stuff. was another store display. Uh, PC7 was a, uh, a, a two part epoxy. And this stuff is great. It works good. It's a little bit thicker than most two part epoxies, which is kind of a drippy. This is more like a putty type when you mix it up. But um, this thing, I, I remember as a kid going into the hardware store up the street with my, my, with my dad. And I remember they had one of these on the counter. And, I, you know, my father would tell me, don't, I had to touch everything when I went into the store. I was always, he said, stop touching. Don't touch anything, you know? And, and every time he turned around, he'd give me the look because I was always messing with something. But this thing was meant to be touched. So I was up there and, you know, it was it was meant to show you how strong the epoxy was. And I would yank on these things. And it came in, you know, two, remember these 35 millimeter film capsules? This is what the stuff comes in here. Or else you could buy it in the bigger tubs like this, you know. But I remember I would yank on everything on this thing. And remember, this was all done using PC7 around the bottle. They used this A-treat uh, beverage bottle that uh, they filled it with red kind of, and the golf ball, that thing is PC7 on there. And and I would, and this piece of tile and the rubber, you know how hard it is, to, and even this sign. And, and so I would yank on all this stuff, trying to pull it off and I couldn't. So even as a, as a kid, 10 years old, I remember thinking, 
that's a good product. That stuff works. I can't even yank this off. And it was funny because even the guys behind the counter, the old timers, they didn't sit there and go, don't touch that. You know, they, they knew what it was and they knew kids like to do that stuff. So I had to get me one. Isn't that cool? Okay, next up, you know, uh, as you know, I collect some antique spark plugs and things. I find them fascinating, but I always wanted a spark plug test. I really like the old champion, the antique spark plug testers, but, you know, they're pretty pricey and they take up a lot. But this here is, is a good tester to test out and actually test your spark plugs, a modern day uh, spark plug tester. Let's, I never tried it before. I want to see how it works and I want to take you along with me. So let's, I got a couple spark plugs that I took out of my truck this year. That's, they got like 60,000 miles on them. Let's see what they look okay, like. So when I take my spark plugs out of my truck, I clean them up. I put them back in the box that the new ones came in and, you know, so they're all clean just in case something happened. I need a spark plug. Uh, so let's, what you do is you take it in, you place it in like this, and then you're supposed to close the cover, but we'll leave the cover open just to give you better visibility. And then when you turn it on, there's three indicator lights here. You can see the power lights and you can hear it going. And let me show you what it looks like. Can you see the uh, spark on there? Let me see if we can. There you go. Can you see that? And we'll turn it up. Now you can see now that's a good way to, you know, you could put a brand new spark plug compared to a used one and get and see you know, which one operates better, but you can see how those sparks spark. Okay, yeah. I dimmed the lights here. I thought it'd be a little fun. Let's see, we'll turn it on. Okay, with the uh, low light conditions and give you a better view. Let's see if we can hit zoom here. Okay, look at that. Is it better this way and zooming in? That is pretty cool, huh? I love stuff like this. <laughs> Okay, for today's project, a long time ago, I don't know how many years, Joel Jacobson, a good friend of the show, sent me a bunch of tools in a box. But this here, this is in um, um, Billings and Spencer, and they made such nice tools. And, you know, these, usually these F-style or auto wrenches are kind of useless, but the Billings, the Diamond, uh, there was a Crescent, there was a couple companies that did make usable ones, and this is one of them. These were much better quality steel really nice and i just wanted to do this up this thing just deserves it's frozen you know i can only get a little bit of movement out of it so i'm going to throw this in some evaporust and we'll be back here we have about six hours in evaporust and uh, you can see we got this to move now it's freed up that's where evaporust really shines it gets in and all the areas you really can't get to. So now we'll take this apart and you can see here, this has a screw for a pin and that's already, look at that. And you can see we rinsed it with water so that's why it's still wet. But you can see that's how nice is that when that comes out like that, slide this off. And uh, it looks to me like there's a little bow, a little bend to it. Let's check yeah, that I did out. an extensive wire brushing on here to make sure we got everything off here, all the rust same thing with the inside here in the holes and even ran the uh the tubular wire brush down there uh so everything is nice and clean but here's how you check and see if you have because it's hard to tell sometimes by your eye so take a straight edge with a white background run it across the back okay we're going to lean it on the back here and you could see the gap where it's bent you could see it's about about one third from the top down. You see that bend? We're touching in the back. We're touching here. So we got a we got a little bit of a bow right here. So let's go to the dake. And here we are, everybody's favorite, the dake. Let's check out the setup. Okay, here we are. We swapped out the step cone for the uh, regular flat cone because we want to distribute the uh, weight, the pressure. We don't want to break any of these teeth, so we want to separate that uh pressure have it across a, a bunch of teeth instead of few and again we, we said the bow is right about here so we have uh, some blocks of wood here the wood will take up some and uh right about there should be good and again we will hold this so that it don't tilt or because sometimes it will want to tilt one way or the other and now again you want to have it so that it has room to bend because this will always want to go back to where it was originally. So let's get that here. 
you see a little bit of movement until it gets straight. Okay, there we go. So let's press down. Now that's just the wood pressing down. You might hear a little clicking, a little splitting over here. Let's raise it up. Okay. Okay, we swapped out that piece of wood that was crackling a little bit. And let's try this one. There we go. Again. Now you see we got well, a little bit of pressure on the wood there, but let's see what it looks like here. Let's see. Yeah, this is definitely a stronger steel than than the ones we're dealing with. So, and you can see because it is crackling the wood, but that's okay because that'll give you an indication of where you are with the pressure. Let's try it again. That was two tons. Try that again. That's a little bit over two tons. You see how much we're pressing into the wood. And then we'll take a look at it with the straight edge. Now we had to readjust it because that bend is right under here. It's gonna need a little more direct pressure so we had to put the step cone on. But again, we're making sure we're not really touching any of those teeth that could be damaged. So let's give it a shot now. Okay, that was the wood breaking. And again, that's why you hold it. But we did get a little bit. Now you see what I was talking about. Now that didn't shoot all the way down. That just broke the wood, shot the wood out. And that's why these are safe compared to the spring type press. Okay, we straightened it out. It's nice and straight now. You can see here. And I'll show you when you put the slide on. Here's an all important test. Put the slide on, see how it matches up. Do you see how nicely the jaws match up here? So it is, uh, it's looking good. What a shame that somebody had beaten this on the back, right? Or else this would have been a nice wrench just to kind of leave in its original condition. But let's clean it up. Let's get rid of these dent marks, what we can do with it. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what Joel's old wrench looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Now I didn't uh, wax it or anything yet. I've been playing with it, uh, trying to get it tweaked out where it's just perfect. And this is just a beautiful wrench now, isn't it? Let's take a look at what we did. First of all, uh, we took the finish down to what I like, re-blued the inside. It did have a bluing on the inside. We re-blued it so it gives you a really nice contrast. Remember how the back of this was all beat up, right? And that kills me. But the way I fixed it, it doesn't look like it was altered, right? But it is a little bit thinner because you had to take off that beat up material. But it's it's acceptable now. If somebody was to see this wrench for the first time, they wouldn't think it was. And just just really nice, huh? And this got all the pits out. And it is a couple, like you can see on the edge there. But, you know, you have to, there's, there's a point where you can go and you, you, you take it. I want to make this into a user wrench. Now, remember it was frozen when we got it. Now look at this, look how nice it is. And here's the best part. Look at this, no rattle. Because what I did was when I took it off, uh, whenever you take any of this side off with any kind of belt sand or anything, you're always gonna, even if it's a couple thousandths of an inch, you're gonna make it a little bit less and it tends to rattle, whatever. I always put a little layer of JB Weld on the inside, but then you gotta file it out. You're only putting a, like a skim coat of a thousandths of an inch on there so uh it closes up nice now the way it should you can see it's parallel just a beautiful wrench isn't it i mean something you would love to put in your pocket and what kills me is when people use this and they bang on it or something a wrench this small is meant for even though you have a capacity of a of much larger like you can go with an inch nut or something and uh, but that's where people make the mistake just because it opens up wide the length of the wrench and the thickness of the wrench determines how much pressure you could use on it. If you had a big nut, instead of knocking on that, you grab a bigger wrench, you know? That's how you do it. That's how you roll. <laughs> anyway, this one's in a can. Nice little wrench, huh?